Is there anything more frustrating than putting a bunch of work into a product just for it not to sell? I mean, I've been there. It's no fun. So today we're gonna take a look at five problems that hold us back from selling our items successfully and how to overcome them. Let's get into it. The projects and products that I will be referring to today in this video are mainly made in a desktop CNC. But all of these strategies and all the things that we're gonna talk about apply to products outside of that as well. All right, number one is you're too broad and you need to niche down. So it's natural to think that we need a lot of people so we can they can buy our items and that's how we're gonna be successful. You don't need a million clients or a million customers or even 100,000 customers. Would that be nice? Of course. If you try to appeal to everyone, you'll end up appealing to no one. Just for the fun of it, let's target the outdoor niche um, for this example. So you like the outdoors. Great, that's a pretty, a lot of people like the outdoors. Well, you like mountain biking. So now we narrowed it down a little bit more. So now we're in the, the outdoors mountain biking niche. Well, we can get more specific. What about downhill mountain biking? So now we've ruled out all the other mountain biking and now we're just down outdoor downhill mountain biking. Well, I think we can actually get more specific. We can add a, a geography to it. So what about downhill mountain biking in Colorado? Okay, so now all the people that like Colorado and like downhill mountain biking, we can target those people. We can make a product for those people that they're going to be attracted to and willing to buy. But let's just take a simple cutting board, for example. Instead of just making a cutting board and putting it out and hoping ever, hopefully somebody is gonna like it, why not make a cutting board that has a detail for downhill mountain biking in Colorado? Whether that's an engraving, whether that's a saying, whether, whatever that may be, whether it's a special slot in the side where they can stick their cheese knife in, I don't know. But the, the point is, is that if you get more specific and make it for someone specifically, they're much more likely to buy it. All right, the second one is you. It's really easy to overthink this whole thing. So we need to stop overthinking and start acting and learning from our experiences. I know this one hits a little close to home and maybe a little personal, but I know a lot of you struggle with this because I struggle with this. And anybody that puts their, their personal work out there to sell struggles with this at one point or another. It's so easy to believe all the lies in our head. My work isn't good enough, so I gotta practice and I gotta get better before I can sell it. Or what do I sell this for? No one's gonna wanna pay that much for this. Or what will people think by me trying to sell the things that I make. But if you don't start, then you're not gonna know what the results are gonna be. Keep this in mind. You don't have to be perfect to start. You don't have to have everything lined up to start. You can get better over time and learn from your experiences. This is exactly the approach that I took when I started this whole woodworking journey. Number three is your product isn't right for your audience or your audience isn't right for your product. Now, this is digging a little bit deeper on number one. It is so important to figure out your audience in order to have success. If you don't know who you're selling to, you don't know who your client is, then you don't know what they want, you don't know what they need. To bring some clarity to this area, to help you out, I have a couple questions that you can answer for yourself. So ask yourself, what is my audience interested in? What problems do they have that I can help them solve? So for example, one of my wholesale clients had a problem. Her current woodworker couldn't keep up with the demand. They were just tapped out, they couldn't make anymore. So I pitched it to her, hey, I can help you out and I can make those trays for you. So I started making them for her and that was as simple as that. So she was my audience at that point. So the audience doesn't need to be one umbrella thing, that's how we typically think about it, but it can be individuals. Another example is on my Instagram account. So on my Andy Bird Builds Instagram account, if I post a physical product for sale, no, there'll be no interest. That's because my audience on Instagram, I built it, they wanna see me actually make the thing. They don't wanna buy it. So I have a separate Instagram account and that's where I post my products at. And so now I have them separated because I have two different audiences. So I'm building a product-based audience over here while I have a content audience over here. All right, number four is you're making the same items as everyone else. To solve this, 
You need to make something unique. It's really common, and I'm guilty of this. I look around me and see what's successful and what isn't successful. So although that is helpful to get started, what works and what doesn't work, if you follow down the path of someone else that's successful doing the same exact thing as them, they're always gonna be ahead of you. So if you identify a product that's successful and you're like, oh, I just need to make that product and, and then I'll be successful. That's not how it works because there's already people that are successful for a reason. They've already learned the ins and outs. They're already ahead of the curve. You're always gonna be behind them. So in order to stand out or to get some of those customers, is, is to make that product, but iterate on it, make it different, make it unique. So that way you can stand out rather than just blend in with all the other items that are exactly same as yours. All right, number five is no one can find your work and you need to create a portfolio. Customers can't buy your work if they don't know it's for sale. So I have found that social media is great for this. When I was first starting out, I used Instagram to document all my work and I'd actually send clients to my Instagram page and I landed a lot of work that way. Now, as my business has evolved, I have a website that does the same thing. So it's really important for people to be able to see your work to create that credibility and create that trust between you and them. I've found that this is something that goes a really long way when people can actually see what you've done or what you're doing. So these are things that I have personally experienced and have led to more success selling the things that I make. If you niche down and get more specific, if you put less thought and more action and learning from those actions, if you can identify your audience and figure out what they want and need, if you can make something unique and create a portfolio doing it, I believe that you will find more success selling the items that you make. If you're wondering what to make and sell this Christmas season, check out this video right here where I go over five projects that you can make and sell this Christmas. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in that video.